The Muhammadan Arabs especially tell the world that the Quran asserts that Abraham was attempting to sacrifice Ishmael and not, as the original story that appears only in the Bible tells us, that it was Isaac. What are the facts? Isaac was Sarah's only son and hence the one who was to have been offered for sacrifice in the Torah. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 And it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell you. And they came to the place which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, lay not your hand upon the lad, nor do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you did not withhold your son, your only son, from me. The version in the Quran, Surah 37, 100 to 107, is completely incompatible with and different from the biblical narrative. Moreover, the Quran does not assert or allege that it was Ishmael who was being offered for a sacrifice, as the later Muhammadan scholars in desperation concocted as an alternative story. The biblical verses above show repeatedly and with great precision that it is always Isaac and only Isaac who is considered as Abraham's foremost son, as in the repeated description of your son, your only son, Isaac. Isaac's name appears in the association with Ishmael in four surahs. His name appears alone, without Ishmael, in association with Abraham and Jacob in eight surahs. The Quran mentions Isaac's name on 16 occasions, while that of Ishmael only eight times. It is a great insult to the human intellect, as well as a pitiable and pitiful endeavor, that the followers of Muhammad attempt their best to pervert, contort, and twist recorded history, facts, reality, and language in order to give themselves a worthy ancestry at any cost. According to the alleged unsubstantiated and totally fabricated Arab traditions and contrary to the original stories from the biblical records, Ishmael is their father just as Isaac was the father of the Israelites. From this very outset, let the listeners be aware that the above so-called traditions did not exist in the mind of the pagan Arabians prior to their alleged revelations in Muhammad's Quran and later Hadith. In this chapter, I shall show the readers the two versions of the story of Ishmael, that of the original of the Bible and that of the Quran for them to compare and contrast. According to the Bible, Abraham was of the Hebrew, Ibri, tribe. Genesis 14.13 and there came one who had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. The Hebrews were one among hundreds of Semitic tribes that lived in the land of what we call now Iraq. If historians are correct in surmising that the Semitic tribes of Iraq and Syria originated from Arabia, then the Hebrews were one of these tribes. If this were the case, then Abraham and Ishmael cannot also be the progenitors of the Arabs from whom they allegedly originate. According to the falsified and unsubstantiated Arab traditions, Abraham journeyed with the baby Ishmael and his mother Hagar to the valley of Mecca and together later on raised the foundations of the Kaaba. Surah Al-Baqarah 2, 127. And remember, Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundations of the house. Our Lord, make of us Muslims bowing to thy will and of our progeny a people Muslim bowing to thy will. The falsification of history, the contortion of facts and reality are the forte of most of the so-called scholars of Islam. They know full well that there exists no such Arab tradition anywhere in either the pagan Arabian records nor in the oral traditions of these Arabs to substantiate any of their allegations. If the Muhammadan scholars are correct, then Allah must have spoken in Hebrew to Abraham and the first language heard near the Kaaba was also Hebrew and not Arabic. It is a measure of their intellectual desperation that the Muhammadan scholars even contradict the Quran 
which asserts in several verses that neither Muhammad nor the pagan Arabs had any knowledge of the previous revelations. Surah Al-Baqarah 2.78 And there are among them illiterates who know not the book. Ummiyuna la ya'lamuna kitaba. The Quranic word Ummi is deliberately misinterpreted as illiterate by the Sunni Orthodox Muhammadans. Critical scholars such as Tabari in his tafsir point out that this curious adjective is invariably used in the Quran in contradistinction and or in opposition to the people of the book Ahl al-Kitab and should therefore be taken to mean one ignorant of holy scriptures and or the earlier revealed religions, that is, unscriptured. The Almighty made it crystal clear to Abraham by emphasizing that his only son Isaac was the one from his first wife Sarah and not from his concubine Hagar, thus eliminating Ishmael from both the attempted sacrifice as well as from the blessing of inheriting the promised land. We are here confronted by an extremely serious and monumental dilemma. Either the Bible is false or the Quran is. Both cannot be correct when they are giving contradictory versions of the same events. Since the Bible preceded the Quran by at least 2100 years, one has to believe that the angel Gabriel gave Muhammad a completely altered version of the Torah from that which was given to Moses face to face by the Almighty and not passed down second-hand and adulterated by an intermediary as in the case of the Quran. One has to assume that Gabriel deliberately changed God's Bible, which is also inconceivable. Since it is impossible to believe that any omniscient, merciful and compassionate God would have ever revealed all the discrepancies, hate-mongering, war-mongering, discrimination, grammatical errors, as well as the historical and character dislocations, mendacities, abnormalities, inconsistencies, time and space displacements that permeate the Quranic versions of the biblical events, then only one conclusion can be possible. That every letter, every word, every verse and every chapter in the Quran are the product of Muhammad's personal thoughts and imaginings. The secretions of his mind based upon his distorted recollections of stories and tales he had heard from Jewish and Christian individuals. They actually represent Muhammad's own alter ego, but cleverly projected it to the unsuspecting mouth of Allah, the supreme pagan rock god of Mecca embedded into the corner wall of the Kaaba called the Black Stone. The author of the Quran, Muhammad, Allah and Gabriel are one and the same. They are all Muhammad himself, while Allah, Gabriel and Satan are mere props required to give his alleged revelations sanctity and divine authority.